Hi, welcome to Shelly Studio, and um, today I am just working in my sketchbook that I've turned into an art journal, and um, this is some leftover paint from another project, and I'm using some glazing medium and some blue Master's Touch acrylic in um, sky blue making it kind of thin because I don't want to lose the circles that I've got there but I do want to cover it up a little bit mute it down and now I'm putting a layer of gesso that blue has dried and I'm putting a layer of gesso because um, I want to lighten it up a bit because I'm going to do some stamping on it this page was actually inspired but by, by my day at work um, we got a new phone system and you can see everything on the computer and on the right hand side there's all the um, calls that come in that are sitting in queues waiting for people to take the calls and on the left hand side are the people that are available. So on the left hand side, um, if somebody's available, the light turns green. On the right hand side, where the calls are holding, if they've been holding a long time, it turns red. So um, the only green light for most of the day it felt like was mine. <laughs> I mean, I know all the people were on the phone. I mean, it did say they were busy or talking on the phone. Um, but it just made me feel like this poor little fish in a pond being attacked by a diver with a harpoon. So that is what I'm creating. Um, I'm going to be the little fish and all those calls will be the diver with the harpoon. So I'm just sketching just kind of a whimsical little fish um, onto this and just kind of, um, I did look at images of fish and I started a practice sketch which I really didn't like and so I'm like, oh, we'll just find a cute little fish and we'll go for it. So um, now I'm going to put some white paint over it so that we can make it a different color and it won't be muddy from the colors below. So I'm just using white paint rather than gesso. Um, you could use either. Um, the gesso might be better, but the white paint works just fine. And this is just a really small angle brush that I'm using. It works, it's a little worn out, but it works good to get um, the edges and little point areas. So like the ends of the fins and stuff. I don't know what my coworkers would think if I had explained to them what this <laughs> what this painting was all about. Um, <laughs> but uh, my sister had a good laugh when I I had told her about it the day I came home from um, that really busy day, and um, when I was talking to her about our new phone system. I described it this way and um, that's when I decided to create this painting. So when I showed her the finished piece she had a good laugh. I show other people the piece without explaining it and they're like, oh that's nice. <laughs> but, so now I am doing the diver and he is coming down so the perspective is a little um, foreshortened I guess is the word. And I'm not that skilled at it, like getting the shading so it looks like, you know, his legs are longer than they look in the drawing, but it turns out okay, I think. Gotta get the harpoon in there. Man, he's really close to my fish. Those were gonna be hands. Um, but then I decided they were so clunky that he's wearing gloves. <laughs> and I'm doing the same thing here, just filling in um, the areas I'm going to paint red and stuff with um, just with the white paint. That'll keep it nice and bright and it won't look so muddy.
This one was also drawn from an image off the internet. Um, I was going to trace it and then I just decided to go for it. Um, but I have no problem with tracing and using um, graphite to get your image onto your surface that you're going to be working. Um, I don't consider it cheating. I think it's just another technique. Now if you steal other people's images, um, of course you can't claim them as your own, but um, you know, I still think if you're practicing and working on something and you need to trace, then you should do it. Like A lot of times I'll draw my own picture and then trace it on because I want to practice on something that's not the piece. And then um, when I get it the way I like it, then of course I want to trace it because I want it to be just just right and not messed up. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> so now, yeah, I'm putting green and yellow. I tried the neon green first and it's just so thin. It just doesn't look like anything when I just brush it on over the white. So I added some I think it's key lime green and there's a little citron and some yellow and it's all just craft paint um, mostly craft smart but there could be some Americana in there Now that that's dried, I'm going to paint in his eyeball. And we'll give him some lips, or her, because I'm a girl, and that's me. <laughs> Get some lips. Alright. So I wasn't sure about using so much red on the scuba diver, but I wanted it to represent um, what I was seeing on my computer screen at work, so it had to be red. So red would represented the time they'd been sitting on hold, and yellow represented how many there there were out there. So um, I do use a little bit of yellow, but the red was scarier looking than the yellow. So I use red for the most of it. And then we'll add some yellow. It ends up looking kind of orange because I do. I didn't want it to be too too bright, so I just mix it in with the red. I add a little bit of darker so I can get some shading going on. I get too much paint on my brush. I always get too much paint on my brush. I'm using a smaller liner brush to get the little edges. So here's where I decide I'm going to use yellow, but I make it orange for his snorkel and his gloves. I didn't really want to put a face behind that mask, so um, I put the orange and I lightened it up a little bit. 
We'll put some glare streaks across it or something. So now I'm trying to give my fish some more depth and layers. He's looking kind of flat, so I um, made some scales. And now I'm just using my Pentel Pocket brush pen and we're gonna outline him and give him some definition, or her, <laughs> some definition. I do like this uh, brush pen. It just um, takes a lot of uh, patience and practice. I am moving super slow, you just can't tell. And there's my glare on that so that uh, it looks like it's reflecting. And then I wanted to put an edge so I just took a thick marker and went around the edge. But it was really quite uneven. Probably would have been better if I did, you know, an ink pad or something. Would have been a smoother look. Now I decided I needed some blue around my fish's eye. So I thought just the black dot wasn't quite good enough. The, the blue I chose, you can hardly see it. And I'm just using um, a white jelly roll pen to give a little bit of a highlight to some of the areas. Just to give it some more depth, hopefully. And I tried drawing bubbles with it. You almost can't see them. I decided since this was an art journal page, it needed words. And I tried really hard to think of what I would write. And I just decided I would write how I felt. And that is help. <laughs> So once that's dry, I go around with the food ball pen um, just to outline it. Um, I have a little bit more control with the food ball than the brush pen, so I went with that just to make it stand out some more. Covering up a few spots that the color was coming through. I hope you like that. I hope it gives you some ideas. Use um, daily events to create your art journal pages. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you did like it, please hit like, um, feel free to comment, share, and if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.